So I talked in the last video about how I don't think most people need to train their biceps. I don't think most people need to train arms directly. It's not necessarily a muscle group that is going to be very beneficial for most people's style of training. And it's not necessarily something that you're going to see results from in the short term. And most people do not have long-term enough of a mindset that they can really benefit from that. So for a lot of people, not a good option. However, if you are somebody who is looking to maximize the size of your arms, you are somebody who has specifically physique, bodybuilding related goals, then yes, of course, you do need to implement some kind of arm training in your routines. And for the longest time, I refused to do this. Even when I basically stopped doing powerlifting specifically in my own training and shifted over to focusing primarily on size, I was just like, I don't like this stuff. I tried so much stuff in the past, tried every single little thing, none of it worked. None of it really seemed to work at least. Even though I know now that yes, it kind of did work, but again, just wasn't really seeing results in the short term. So I kind of got frustrated. You know, I used to do all kinds of stuff. So we used to have like 21s, which is like seven reps, uh, full range of motion, seven reps, top half of the range of motion, seven reps, bottom half of the range of motion. I used to do a lot of machine curls. I used to do a lot of dumbbell curls, easy bar curls. I used to do a lot of preacher curls. I think that was probably what I would say was my favorite of all of the curl exercises that I did, none of it really seemed to jive with me. Even when I was doing insane amounts of volume, right? Like I would, you know, I would work out, I would do like a whole workout, and then I would sit down on the preacher bench, and I would do honestly like 10, 15 sets of arms in a row. Like just, you know, like just until I was completely exhausted, just wasting a crap ton of time. You know, I'd start off, I'd basically do like pyramid sets, start off with a lightweight, work up to a heavier weight, work down to a lighter weight again, you know, until I, you know, doing drop sets until I got exhausted, all that. I hated all of that. None of that stuff felt good. Very often it didn't feel like I was training the biceps directly. I felt like I was often putting a lot of strain on my forearms, on, you know, the other muscles around my biceps, on my wrists. But I wasn't necessarily actually feeling much of a pump in my bicep itself. Similar situation for me for triceps, uh, you know, maybe a little bit better in terms of like, okay, I was doing like rope grip push downs and various kinds of push downs and dips and so on. Definitely felt those a bit more, really felt like I was working my triceps. But also there were a lot of movements where it just really felt like, again, I was not really getting much of a range of motion. I was not really getting much of a pump in my triceps. Really felt like it was working a lot of other related muscles around that, as opposed to actually just working the triceps directly. More recently, I decided to try out BFR training. So for those of you who don't know what that is, blood flow restriction training. It's a kind of training where basically you use essentially a tourniquet or a cuff some kind of you know device that you put on your arm or your leg to prevent the blood flow from you know completely leaving the affected limb and so you know basically what that does is that means that you get a much bigger pump because you're sort of like retaining more of the swelling you're retaining more of the uh the fluid buildup i guess you could say the blood comes in but it doesn't come out as quickly and so as a result you can get a really nasty pump very quickly and bfr you know basically has a few sort of features to it. One is that basically, you know, there was a lot of research a few years back that you know made it really popular about how essentially they found that if you did BFR training, you could often get the same results with lighter weights that you could with heavier weights. So essentially this meant, hey, you know, if I can get the same results with lighter weights, this is probably an easier, better deal for me. And other things that are good about that, like maybe I have some injuries that I'm trying to work around, I can't use as heavy of a weight and so on. So, you know, some, some beneficial effects there as well. So, you know, BFR craze was happening. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try this out. I will say that BFR training for arms was probably the sickest, nastiest pump I've ever gotten. I would do very light weights. I would do, you know, maybe not sets to complete failure, but sets to near failure. And I would be just like, you know, like my arms were blowing up, incredible pump, felt amazing, awesome. The problem that I had was that it was very inconvenient for me personally to do that style of training. So BFR for arms basically means that you're putting a cuff, you can't really, you know, you can't really see <laughs> super well, but you're putting a cuff basically, you know, above the bicep, just below the shoulder. 
I tried a variety of different cuffs. The problem that I had was either the cuffs would break down very quickly because they were not very good, they're super expensive, or, you know, you just kind of struggle to get it tight enough that you can really get the BFR effect where you, again, you prevent the blood from flowing out. So it, you know, pools in your arms. You know, it just became a lot of like hassle to have to set these up every time you do a workout and all that. Ultimately, like, could I still continue down that path? You know, is that something that would have worked? Yeah, but it was also like really freaking annoying. And also it feels a little bit weird, you know, trading in a commercial gym, being the only person doing that. Obviously, like when I'm working out here in this room, uh, you know, just doing some home workouts with some dumbbells. Okay, that's fine. But I also just don't like dumbbell curls. I'll talk about that more in a minute. And so ultimately, I just kind of, you know, stopped being as interested in BFR training over time. Could I get back to it? Yeah, probably. It was also just a lot of hassle that I just didn't want to do. And so for a while, again, still not really training for strength, still training mostly for size. I still just kind of like, okay, like, I don't want to do arm training. It doesn't feel great. It doesn't feel like I'm getting anything going on, etc. And then that did change more recently when we started to have the whole discussion about lengthened partials in training. So I've done another video about this. Essentially, the concept of lengthened partials is that you are doing exercises where you are not doing a full range of motion. You are just doing maybe half the range of motion, but you're specifically doing it on the bottom half of the range of the most, and the most stretched out part of the range of motion. Which, you know, as I was discussing earlier, we kind of used to do this in various ways back in the olden days with 21s. You know, again, seven sets, uh, lengthened partial, seven sets, shortened partial, seven sets, full range of motion. Uh, or sorry, seven reps, you get the idea. Anyway, point is, nothing, not necessarily super new, but it was really the first time that, you know, we really thought about, hey, let's like actually really focus on that lengthened partial. And that's when we got stuff coming out like the Bayesian curl, which is basically a lengthened partial bicep curl with a cable machine, really focusing on one arm at a time. There is discussion of stuff like doing curls with an inclined bench so that basically your arm is hanging down. You've got a huge stretch in your bicep and then you can really focus on that pump as you're coming up. I will say that, you know, aside from you know, the current discussion about whether or not lengthened partials actually work and are actually beneficial. I actually tried these exercises for the first time after years of being like, you know, I thought I tried every single bicep variation under the sun, etc. And they work and I enjoy them. And most importantly, I feel like I'm really getting a pump with these exercises in a way that I never got doing dumbbell bicep curls all day doing easy bar bicep curls all day, doing barbell bicep curls all day, doing cable curls all day. None of that's like, I cannot tell you enough, like how it felt when I was doing those exercises. Like, yeah, I'm definitely doing something. Yes, it sucks. Yes, like I'm feeling fatigue, but it doesn't really feel like I'm ever getting a pump in my arms themselves. Focusing on that stuff really, really helps me feel like, okay, I'm actually working my biceps now. I'm actually getting a pump. I'm actually getting a feeling like I'm doing something. I am actually feeling like I am growing in response to this training. And of course, it's not like I have been extremely carefully measuring my biceps every single step of the way and so on. So again, lots of stuff I was doing in the past. Was it helping? Probably more than I thought. Yes, absolutely. Was it probably not optimal for me? Also true. Finding these exercises that I actually really enjoy and that actually feel like they're doing something to me, that's a huge, huge advantage. Like that's a, you know, miles, miles and miles change on top of everything. And likewise, similar situation with triceps. So, you know, big suggestion from the whole length and partials crowd is that one of the best ways to train your triceps is when they're already in a stretched position, which would mean basically, you know, overhead extensions as opposed to extensions under your body and you know behind you and doing these silly little tricep kickbacks and all that stuff that never felt very good never really felt like I was really working the muscles right when I have actually focused on overhead tricep extensions and I actually focus on controlling the weight being very careful really focusing on that end range of motion same thing again really feels like I am actually working the triceps for the first time in my life, actually getting a pump in the triceps for the first time in my life. Could you be doing all kinds of other triceps exercises? Will they work well for you? Of course. Is this necessarily gonna generalize to everybody in the world? Of course not. But I will say, 
similar situation, doing these triceps exercises stretched overhead works a lot better for me. And so what I am typically doing now is I'm often doing a dumbbell overhead tricep extension or like a pullover or skull crusher with the focus on that stretch or also just like a rope grip tricep extension. I like that one also because I can really focus on like letting the weight come all the way down, really stopping, feeling the stretch, you know, doing a nice clean rep every single time as opposed to, you know, using a little bit of momentum and getting stuff all over the place, etc. So is there a moral to this story? I mean, not necessarily. Maybe this advice is helpful for you. Maybe you're somebody who really likes rope grip tricep pushdowns. They feel awesome to you. You get a pump from that. You know, all power to you. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. But these are some exercises that I can recommend that may feel a bit better, may actually you know, get you a better pump, may actually get you better results. So, you know, why not? help me, maybe it'll help you. That is all for this week's video. As always, I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I will talk to you all next week. Have a good one.